What's going on, guys? First three up and three down of 2020 on Superman's Comics, and we're starting right now. What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We do a lot of comic and pop culture content on this channel, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. This is Three Up, Three Down, where we are covering three hot and three cold market trends in the comic community. Starting right with that three up portion, we are talking Beta Ray Bill. A lot of news came out, especially recently with Christian Bale, some being in talks with Marvel to star in this movie. There's rumors that he may play Beta Ray Bill. There's rumors that he may play someone else, but take that out of the equation. No doubt Beta Ray Bill is kind of hot regardless of that news. But what say you about it, Jack? Right now, Ben Ray Bill's always been a really a cult popular character. Um, it, it's kind of has, in maybe not a direct comparison, but a, a Moon Knight vibe, where it seems like the comic collecting community has pulled for this character. They wanted to see this character show up um, on film. This character spikes on a regular basis anytime there's any sort of rumblings of Ben Ray Bill showing up in the MCU. If you remember years ago when he was supposedly um, in like the collector's collection in a, in a tube, his books went through the roof. Uh, so that's pretty typical, but you hit the nail on the head, Brian, about Christian Bale. Um, it's kind of a combination of things. It looks like we're going to get Beta Ray Bill in the next Thor movie. Simultaneously, it also looks like we're going to get Christian Bale in the next Thor movie. Now, there's been a lot of speculation. People kind of make it natural leap and assumption saying it'd be better Ray Bill. But I don't think you pay the price that it's going to cost you to get a Christian Bale. I don't think you get Batman to be in a Thor movie and then throw CGI covering up his face. I think instead, it's more likely that he plays one of the other characters. Now, the most popular thought has been Dario Agar, who um, becomes Minotaur, who was very popular in the Jason Aaron run. Um, I think that's more logical, and there's also some talk with Mephisto, um, which is certainly plausible seeing where they're going in the story. But uh, either way, it looks like we're going to be getting Better Ray Bill. I know we've said that before, but Better Ray Bill is spiking because of it. Um, so we're seeing those uh, Simons and Thor uh, books go through the roof, but it's interesting. We haven't yet seen Marvel Age number six get any sort of attention, and I've always waited for that book to get kind of market attention, as it has a preview um, of Better Ray Bill prior to the release uh, in the Thor run. Yeah, I always thought for sure we'd say uh, Beta Ray Bill and Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. before Thor, just because of the whole him showing up in the collector's collection yeah. at the time. And then tying into Adam Warlock. But either way, Beta Ray Bill, it's ups and downs. And right now, it's definitely up. And it's on the three-up portion of the show. Next one on the three-up portion of the show. No stranger to this channel. We love this book. We love this character. We love the creators. But we are talking about Kanto. Why is it up right now? Who knows? There's news of the new David Boo and Drew Zucker are creating new content for Kanto right now. But either way... We've been huge champions of this book, and I'm glad to see other people are taking interest in this character. We got a trade paperback coming out for it soon. I think believe February, March time frame. You can pre-order it on Amazon right now. But if you haven't read this, definitely recommend picking this up. But why is it up right now, Jack? Well, you know, that you're right. That's really hard to pinpoint. I actually even had this exact back and forth with David Boer on Instagram. Um, you know, he asked me why I thought, I said I, I really wasn't sure. He posed uh, year-end lists, and it's actually what I was going to suggest because Canto showed up on basically every major publication, every major website, kind of like top 10 comics of 2019, um, year-end comics of 2019 lists, all those, um, you know, those lists that you tend to see at, in every kind of genre of pop culture as we go into a new year. But I think that kind of got people to pay attention to it. I also have since kind of like looked into it more. And I remember being on the mic maybe a month ago saying, you know, every issue of Canto is for sale on the IDW website. Well, if you go there today, there's no first print number ones. There's no second print number ones. There's no third print number ones. There's no first print number twos. You know, it's a, it's a vastly different story as far as the supply and demand. So I think increased attention. Um, I think maybe some of the naysayers early on who started to see 
not just people like myself and you talk about this book, but now you're seeing, you know, like major, major publications talk about the book. Um, and that gives credence to maybe the collectability of the character. And then that combined with now this shortage of, say, available cheap copies, we're suddenly seeing number one jump back up to $25, $30, even with those defects that are, that book's going to have. Pressed copies, copies that have had that defect taken out and that have a higher likelihood, that's a tough 9.8, very common 9.6. But books that have that shot at that 9.8, they're going for as much as $50. Yeah, and another great thing about these is the later printings, like we always champion and are, are grateful for is those later printings. They had different covers, and they're gorgeous covers on top of them. Amazing. Yeah, and I mean, even exclusives. Um, Frankie's Comics, our channel sponsor, has a, uh, I think it's a third print virgin exclusive. Um, even exclusives, if you look at eBay sales data, people are going back and collecting all of these different, um, every exclusive that was done for the book was a later printing because no one jumped on board when the first print hit. Uh, people got on board later. But uh, people are grabbing up these convention exclusives, grabbing up these store exclusives as well. Right. Then the last one we want to talk about on that three up portion, here's another one where the trailer just dropped and we are talking about Morbius. Right now, Jared Leto, probably no better person to play this character, trailer looks phenomenal we saw hype when this movie was announced especially spider-man 101 but there's other books right now other morbius books people are got that fever and they're going out there and buying up some of these books and that's kind of why it's up but why why else jack oh well you know i think that is the reason like this this industry at this point is driven by movies uh, movies are completely what the comic book buying community is changing the game price-wise with. It's why kind of like an overstreet price guide is a cool tool, but not one that you can use every day. It's got to be something that can change rapidly because these things can happen. Um, so, you know, that wasn't even a full trailer. That was a teaser. Um, and we saw not just the first appearance of Morbius, because I think people got the feel from that teaser. Similar to when Sony released the Bloodshot original teaser trailer, it just kind of made people calm down and go, okay, this is better than we thought. Now, the second reason is something within the trailer, Brian, is the tie-in to the MCU. The fact that we had a vulture appearance and the fact that there was uh, the Spider-Man wanted graffiti on the wall, which then plays into the current story with Mysterio. So we know that this ties in somehow. Um, it's going to tie into Spider-Man. It will most likely tie into Venom. Um, and... I think it gives this movie a kind of shot in the arm. So we're not just seeing 101, like you mentioned, we're seeing 102. We're seeing all of those early solo stories um, in in books like uh, Vampire Tales and, um, uh, you know, Fear, Adventures into Fear. Um, so we're starting to see those books spike. We're seeing it's they're really tough because we don't have a lot of information on other characters and plot of this movie. So... Pure speculation is Spider-Man number 76 is the first appearance of a character named Hunger, who they think, everyone thinks the villain for the movie is. But we really truly don't know that. So that's that's kind of like a pure speculation. But that book's dropped, jumped up to about $20, $25. Um, and you're also starting to see um, Creatures number 30 start to get some momentum as it. Uh, that's the first appearance of Simon Stroud who is played by Tyrese in the film. So um, it's really kind of slow going with the rest of the cast, but as far as Morbius, ASM 101, um, any of the, the second printing is up to about $40. Um, so that definitely this title, this character, this has collector interest now. It's going to be something that I think is only going to grow from here. So much so that we're going to do a back issue. Bolo talking about the top five, uh, Morbius books that will drop this week. Um, we are also going to do, we always talk about doing it books and sell our titles and series. We actually are going to do a five part one leading up to this movie. Um, and we're going to talk about every Morbius thing, whether we're looking at variants, um, whether we're looking at affordable books. Um, we're going to have you covered for this movie. Uh, and I think that this is going to be a character that only gets more and more popular leading up into its July 31st release. Right. 
And I'll say, if not the character is hot, that trailer is definitely hot because the day it yeah. released, I couldn't scroll down my Facebook timeline without seeing it about 25 different times. Exactly. Same with Instagram, same with anything. But speaking yeah. of Facebook and Instagram, you can follow Superman's Comics. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Check him out on Instagram. But that's going to be our three up. And we're going to waste no time right now going into that three down portion. Now, these we always say these might be kind of cool, but it also could present great buying opportunities while people are, are overlooking some of these books right now. But the first pick for the three down portion is that DC Dark Multiverse. And it wasn't too long ago that this was kind of hot, especially with the Dark Knight's Metal or some of that other type dark. Uh, the Batman Who Laughs kind of always stays kind of hot, but no doubt the basic majority of that dark multiverse and that those books right now are kind of on the downward trend. Yeah. You know, and it's really truly Brian, just from a secondary market perspective. Um, the reality is that most people enjoy these characters. Most people have enjoyed these stories, but the DC universe is very fragmented. You have a lot of different things going on at different times. Um, Batman's involved in this story and he's involved in that story, but it, it's not, you know, it's like it's almost like two it feels like two different worlds um and marvel right now is kind of dominating the discussion with reader buzz and you and i have talked about this where um there are some overlooked dc books so these dark multiverse whether it's the one shots that came out whether it was the store exclusives that had like beautiful art germ cover art um whether it's uh you know the actual storyline that's going on in the comics right now with the new secret six and the batman who last who a lot of people have really tried to there was some initial build for it there was people talk now i don't want to say tried to get it hot but people were behind it initially um we heard a lot of chatter about the early batman superman issues um and people wanting those kind of dark characters and then it happened and then everything's kind of petered out um so It'll be interesting to see what happens. Even the first appearances of the like original, um, like the Red Death and thing, and you know Batman Who Laughs. They, those have kind of slowed down in sales. Um, they're they're still value, but they're not at the same level. Grim Knight really hasn't taken off. Um, although it's interesting, he's getting a Funko Pop soon. So you know that's that's one of those things where. Um, I think there's still meat on the bone there, like you mentioned, because Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo are, are going to get back together and tackle this Dark Knight or a Dark Metal universe coming up. And that could reignite things as it, it kind of is on the tip of everybody's tongue. But we'll have to really see, um, I think, these last couple storylines um, and their kind of extension into the DC universe hasn't quite gone the way they would hope, at least from a secondary market perspective. Right. And then the next pick for the three down portion this week is recently released indie comics. There are some outliers there, of course, but for the most part, a lot of these indie books, they're kind of drizzled out. But that's also kind of the life cycle of yeah. indie books. Still great reads. A lot of collectors still go back and pick them up, but a lot of them are limited series or they come out great reads. But then I think just the pure attrition of comic book release day New stuff comes out, old stuff gets buried on the bottom, and the attention span kind of goes away, and they get cold. Yeah, so you and I talk about indies on a weekly basis. We're big proponents of the independent comic market. I think it's vital to the overall success of the comic market. I think the stars of the big two are kind of like born on the indies. Um, and, you know, I'm also, I, I, we're entrepreneurs, independent comics at, at the basis of it is entrepreneurship um and we talk about indies on a regular basis and we also talk about their value and collectability and there are a lot of naysayers to that and it tends to come from people who collect from the big two and their argument is always indies don't retain value and there's some truth to that and that's why we're talking about it here um you can use any of those hot boom books as an example, and people are going to make it about boom. It's nothing to do with boom. It's truly indies, and I can prove that by talking about other publishers like Image and Reaver. Um, you know, there was a, that's a book that was red hot when it came out, and then has, as it's been out, it's kind of lost the attention. Um, same thing with a lot of like the small press publishers, like whether it's Source Point Press or um, books from 
you know, even books like we talked about, we we were heavy on for Mad King Studios, Knights of the Golden Sun. And then the last one we're going to talk about for the three down this week is Spider Zero. We're talking about that Walmart exclusive. Yeah. This one was super hot a few weeks ago. Now it seems to be kind of on the downward trend. Why is that, Jack? Simple supply and demand. It's not that this character like has lost any. I'm going to get hammered for even putting this character on the list because it's not like this character hasn't lost attention from the community. The community is very much behind the belief that you know, Miles Morales' sister is Spider Zero, and this is the first appearance. And we're and... not saying the character's cold. We're saying that Walmart book is cold. Yeah, and when I'm not saying the Walmart book isn't a good investment or a good book to have, I'm simply saying when the the facts that when this book spiked initially, it hit prices of twenty five to thirty dollars. And what happens when a book goes to twenty five to thirty dollars, Brian? It's five dollars at Walmart. Everyone's Everyone, going to Walmart. Right. Everyone's going to Walmart. Self checkout. And <laughs> and at that point, um, you're seeing Instagram posts. And you start to see them like mount up, right? You start to see them on Facebook of people grabbing five, of people grabbing seven. Um, and at that point, you start to realize, man, these things are going to get flooded on eBay. And then the impatience sets in. It's, it's, it, it reminds me of that art germ Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. It's, but it's, that's happened with, every time one of these Walmart books has gotten hot. That has happened. Um, is they get a little bit of heat. Everybody jumps on, loads them, and then the undercutting happens. And if you're not, if you don't know what undercutting, you're not familiar with it in this context. What we're talking about is that impatience, that guy who simply bought that book for five dollars to make a quick buck. So it's going for twenty five consistently. He lists it for twenty five, but because more got listed, instead of it selling in one day, it's going to take three days to sell. But he's not patient enough to wait for that three days. So then he cuts it to eighteen ninety five. Sells today. And now that's the new standard of pricing that's been set. And that keeps happening until the market stops. And that's what we end up seeing in these situations. So this book is about a $17.99 book right now. Still good value on a $5 purchase. You're not making a lot of profit after shipping because that's shipped. So we're talking shipping and fees. But, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see if that book rebounds. But if you missed out completely on this character... You have some opportunity now. Seventeen ninety nine is not a terrible buying price. I will say also, instead of undercutting, maybe you should just have a price match guarantee. I guess. <laughs> but, but there it is, guys. There's a three up, three down. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Do you have some of these books that are going up? Do you have some that are going down? Do you think these are good buying opportunities for the ones that are on the downward trend? And if you haven't read Canto, highly suggest you at least pre-order that trade paperback. If you don't want to go out there and spend money on the floppies of the single issues, they're still out there to be had, though they are on the rise. But either way, they're still out there to be picked up. And I want to also take this time. I want to give a shout out to Itty Bitty Podcast. I was fortunate enough to be on a guest on his podcast this week. So it should be dropping pretty soon if you follow him. He's pretty much available anywhere. There's a podcast, Google, um, iTunes, Stitcher. I know he distributes it all across, but great conversation. We talked about an hour, him and I, about comic books. So I appreciate him having me on. Make sure you follow him on Instagram as well. And with that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. And we will see you guys in the next video.